Hi, a very good morning to the audience present here. My name is Vignesh and I'll be representing Team Enablers uh, for our presentation today. So uh, first of all, uh, let's get started. Uh, introducing to you our team, right? Our team actually, uh, next slide please. Or uh, the slide before. Okay, yeah, so introducing to you our team members. Uh, first of all, uh, you have myself, I'm Vignesh, I'm a year two computer engineering uh, student. And uh, Jamie is a year two engineering sciences student. And uh, Chen Yi is also a year two computer science student. And lastly, we have Sreta, who's a year one biomedical uh, engineering student. And our team mentor was Nelson Tan. Uh, he has actually been a very uh, helpful mentor to our team, uh, guiding us uh, throughout the journey, throughout this project. So all of us are actually from uh, NUS. Uh, and uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, so uh, the problem statement that we're actually tackling uh, in involves around the uh, visually impaired. So our beneficiary, right, uh, as, you, as some of you may already know, visually uh, challenged people uh, sometimes have, uh, I mean, their day-to-day -day lives, they usually struggle in recognizing their day-to-day -day, uh, household objects. Uh, they are present in their vicinity. And uh, some of them actually develop uh, visual impairments uh, sometime later on in life. So they were not people who already used uh, Braille language or they had the knowledge of Braille to actually help them out when they actually became uh, visually impaired. Uh, so the uh, lack of knowledge in Braille was also another uh, key uh, problem that we were trying to solve uh, for the visually. So our solution had to actually make sure that uh, we do not use any kind of uh, Braille related matters. And uh, likewise, right, uh, the, after we had our interview with the beneficiary, uh, they also mentioned that they would like to leave uh, notes to their family members, just like post-it notes. Uh, so that was something we had to take into account also. And lastly, uh, there are already some um, products that are available uh, on the market, such as QR codes or like uh, NFC tags, whereby you use a mobile app, you just go close to these uh, tags or QR codes, and then uh, it reads out the message for you through, the, through a particular mobile app. So, but our beneficiaries mentioned that they do not want to use any other third party uh, apps or any other kind of uh, second device. They just want a product which they can actually stick it to surfaces and they can actually uh, press some kind of button and then it will actually voice out to them what the particular object is or any particular message which is stored in the particular, uh, in the particular tag that is tagged to the uh, object. So next slide. So, the slide before. Okay, yeah. So that's that is where uh, the idea for voice it was born. So uh, we actually wanted to build a voice recording and playing label to actually aid the visually impaired and identifying objects around the uh, uh, around their vicinity. And there are some constraints also or expectations rather. Like these labels had to be adhesive to different surfaces like uh, clothing and household objects and also uh, tools that metallic tools. So we can't really uh, think of one particular adhesive that we can use to actually uh, make sure that the label can be pasted on all of these uh, different types of clothing and uh, materials and surfaces. Uh, so, and also uh, we have currently uh, stepped up one of our implementation. We are actually thinking of actually having a some kind of uh, IR sensor, which actually uh, automatically voices out a particular message when a person is very near to a particular object on which the label is uh, tagged to. So that is still a work in progress. Uh, I will share with you more details later on. Next slide, please. So yeah, so here are some of the more technical uh, side of our product. So the main uh, brain inside our product, right, is actually this ISD1820 uh, sound and voice recording module. Uh, it's actually currently available in the market and was highly appropriate to, the, to our project at hand. So uh, this means that it actually aids us. Uh, uh, so incorporating this particular recording module, right, uh, and also making sure that we enhance the placement of the different components and the design of uh, the product will actually suit our purpose in actually uh, relaying a functioning product to our beneficiaries. So uh, this was the module that we chose to use. And next slide. So in this particular module, right, uh, this is actually the circuit diagram of ISD1820. Uh, by default, right, it comes with the ROC, ROSC resistor of 100 kilo ohms and a sampling rate of 6.4 kilo hertz, which means that the maximum recording time uh, provided by this uh, module is about 10 seconds. So a person can actually uh, record uh, 10 seconds of audio messages uh, using this ISD1820 uh, module. However, 
uh, it is actually possible to actually convert uh, the module to take in an audio of duration as, up, as long as up to 20 seconds if we were to change the resistor to 200 kilo ohms and a sampling rate of 3.2 uh, kilohertz. So yeah, that is the particular resistor we have to change. And next, this is actually a side view of the assembly that we uh, plan to actually uh, incorporate into our product. Uh, so the ISD1820 module would actually be the uh, main component of the uh, label that we're working on. And it will actually be covered by two different uh, uh, shielding bags or some kind of uh, uh, 3D printed material uh, to cover it on the front and cover it on the back. Uh, yeah, and the next slide. Yeah, so now we'll just be showing you a video of how the uh, product will be working. Um, there is no sound. Uh, it's all right, I think you can just play the video then without the sound. So yeah, this is a representation of our finalized prototype. So it uh, has a few buttons for you to record and also play. And this is the back of our device whereby we have magnets and also magic tape and uh, also the battery we are using a three volt uh, button battery so this makes it uh, possible for the product to be st uh, stuck on any different uh, surfaces so this is just a video of uh, me uh, recording a simple message like this is a fridge and then it reads back out but we can't listen to it right now without the audio so sorry about that uh, but yeah so basically it uh, we can stop the video and move on to the next slide Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so how does it benefit our end users, right? So quickly, uh, as you can see, our proposed solution will benefit our end users because most of them are experiencing vision loss or visually impaired. So uh, our purpose is to mainly provide them with the needed support in identifying objects. And uh, the product comes with uh, ability to actually record the audio uh, and also replay it when necessary. And also, right, uh, we uh, it's actually relatively cheap. It's just around $8. Uh, the uh, components that we use to actually create it uh, cost less than $8. If you were to actually make it, uh, buy it in bulk and uh, mass produce the labels, right, I think we can drive the cost down even lower. And as the ability, this product has the ability to be pasted on different surfaces because of the use of magic tape and magnets and safety pins. So, yeah, and it's also easy to use and also it's very uh, durable and lightweight, which makes it uh, convenient for our users. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, yeah, as I already mentioned, we have some works in progress, uh, such as increasing the uh, audio duration limit to about 20 seconds from the normal 10 seconds. And also we are going to incorporate some IR proximity sensor to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that uh, automatic uh, boy, uh, audio recordings are played when a person is very near to a particular object. And yeah, that's all. Uh, that's about it from my side. Uh, are there any questions? All right, thank you, team and labelers. All right, may I just ask a question? Um, perhaps can you share some of the challenges that you faced during this entire process? Uh, yeah, well, uh, most of us, I mean, all of us are actually university students. So one of the greatest uh, problems we faced was time management and also uh, finding uh, the right set of uh, tools to actually work on so uh, basically uh, different all of us have worked from different backgrounds we are different uh, kind of technical selves, uh, uh, skill sets so some knew how to use particular tools some didn't know how to so that was a problem that we faced uh, and also uh, time management wise uh, it was also hard to find uh, some kind of uh, workable time for all of us to meet together to actually work on the project so most of our meetings uh, uh, were like uh, happening through zoom or we were actually working on individual portions of the uh, product by ourselves then uh, we will meet up as a team uh, once in a while i think we only met up as a team about once or twice uh, in the past few months so that's not uh, ideal for a particular uh, you know a project uh, group project of this size 
So yeah, pretty much that was uh, our two main problems faced, uh, time management and also the ability to uh, work across uh, disciplines, like using different tools and et cetera. All right, thank you for that. So although you face these challenges, we still see that you came up with a really well thought out solution. So good job for that. Um, perhaps you can just end off with um, one learning point that you have um, that you would like to take away um, from taking on this challenge statement. Yeah, sure. Maybe uh, Shweta, would you like to answer the question since you're here? I'll just give the time to our other team member. Uh, yeah, so uh, one learning point was that because initially when we came up with a solution, like we had different ideas which we thought that will, will look best like from our perspective. But after um, communicating with the um, beneficiary themselves, we could see like what was the problems that they faced. So uh, one thing that I learned was that for design, it's not just about what you think might be good and what you think might be useful for them. But the more important one is what they themselves feel that is important since they are the best person to know about it. All right, thank you for that. Indeed, thinking about the end user might not be um, the right direction, but asking them themselves might be the better solution, right? So thank you, team and labelers, for your presentation.